Hello and welcome to the Empath Zone podcast where we discuss various topics about being an empath and spirituality and many other subjects as well. I'm Gary Lee, I'm an empath and a healer and I run the Empath Zone. With me today as usual are two co-hosts. The first is Jennifer Harris. So hi Jen, how are you? Hi, I'm known as Jen, everybody knows me that. And my special lies in demonology, angels, and pretty much a wide topic of spiritual awakenings. Great. And our other regular co-host is Marisol. Hi, Mari. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. And you basically mm-hmm. are an expert in psychic attacks and will probably know a lot about this subject today, which is about psychic vampirism. Yes, I know a little bit about it. Let's get started. Okay, well, over to you, Jen. Well, today is about a specific version of vampirism, which is the psychic vampire. Which, we're going to go over what types of psychic vampires they are, what their characteristics are, and why are they considered psychic vampires, as well as what causes this to happen. Uh, First off, I want to say that even though there is no actual medical proof of this, a lot of people have been saying that their psychic vampires have experienced this technical chi leak, which is what causes them to require a constant flow of energy into themselves because they cannot replenish their life force on their own standing which a lot of these psychic vampires had taken a survey back in 2007, and they showed evidence of higher than normal instances of certain illnesses and conditions such as anemia, fibromyalgia, and hemophilia. Whether they actually suffered from these conditions or not was never evaluated by medical professionals, though, so keep that in mind. When we talk about things such as vampires, psychic vampires. There's a lot of myth and problems with this because people want to say, oh no, you make me feel bad, you're a psychic vampire. And I don't want this to become a witch hunt for you to go out and start saying, hey, you're a psychic vampire, let's go get them. I myself, one of my daughters, is actually a psychic vampire. And she's went from being the first type to actually being quite dangerous in some respects but she knows what she's doing now and can not hurt others well that's interesting so it's basically being aware of what it's all about and then you can control it correct so if you know what you're doing and how you're doing it or can recognize it in someone else you can essentially circumvent things from escalating okay so what are the signs Well, the signs basically are someone that you are around that you feel drained when you're near them. But they're, like, happy and chipper and, like, so happy that when they're with you, they seem to get a whole new life or energy force that you're losing yours. That's kind of a sign of saying, okay, this person is draining you. They might be a psychic vampire. But what type of psychic vampire are they? And that the main issue here is people don't understand what types there are. So what I would like to do is just start off with naming them, which would be the first type would be a grazer. And then we have elemental, emotional, and dominions. Okay, well let's go through them one by one. Okay. So the first type would be a grazer. And these type enjoy places like malls and places with a lot of people and a lot of movement because in essence they're feeding off the emotions of the crowd things that people are like oh yay let's run here let's run there and they're giving off emotion and energy and the psychic vampire will just suck it up like a vacuum cleaner they're technically not feeding off of a direct person per se but the ambient energy that's laying around. Okay, would that be positive or negative energy or does it merely matter? It depends on what they are. Um, Most grazers don't have a particular 
type of energy that they prefer. However, some become more targeters. And so they say, okay, well, I'm here, everybody's like at a funeral and I really like this. This is making me energized. And so they get a taste for that particular emotion. And so they will target in on those emotions such as fear, anger, sadness, control. Then that's when they start to become an emotional type vampire. So major events that uh, will calamities would be like a feast for them. Exactly. But they're not trying to hurt anyone when they're doing this until they become addicted or target certain emotions. That's when it starts to become a problem. Well, how does it work with targeting certain emotions? Is it that they go on the hunt for it or they create the situation? Um, depends on the type of emotional vampire they are. I'll get to that in a minute. Okay. The, the second type would be the elementals, which are typical grazers in a way, but they only feed on things like water, air, fire, trees, sun, things that we find around us that aren't human emotion or energy. So someone that likes to go out and into nature when they're feeling down and out, they go out into nature and they feel energized because they're sucking up the, the ground energy or the air energy around them. So that sounds a little healthier, actually. It is a very healthy, but it doesn't sustain them as long mm -hmm. as human energy and emotions would do. And that's where they tend, the uh, elemental types, tend to start to feed more on emotionals because of the fact that they're not sustaining enough for themselves in their environment. And what's the next one? The next would be emotional vampires. They have the refined tastes for specific emotions. So you're looking at someone that, like I said before, that had been a grazer or they might have started out as a grazer, I should say, but they didn't exactly get what they need until they figured out exactly what they wanted. And so someone that went to a funeral and found they were energized would target them on grief or sadness, or someone that was in a calamity, like you said, that was in a world problem, you know, shootings, something that causes fear and anxiety. If they get a taste for that and enjoy that, or it feeds them, then they will target in on those type of places or people that have those emotions around them. And so you'll have this emotional type of vampire will hang around someone that is either depressed, so they could feed off their depression, or they will have someone that they'll go to hospitals to feed off of people's anxieties or grief things like that, right. which could possibly make them dangerous if they don't get enough of what they need or they specifically target someone. Dangerous in what way? Dangerous is when they start to trigger an emotion out of a person to feed off of them. And so if they are in pain or anger feeders, then they will trigger someone to anger, cause a fight, an argument, go to a bar and start a huge brawl in the bar. If they're into pain, then they will literally cause pain to others, you know, fighting, um, attacking people. That's when they start getting dangerous. The other thing is, is that they are targeting you specifically and they're trying to get you to give them a specific emotion. Let's say they feed off of your anger. So they will trigger you into anger so that they can feed off that anger. And the more anger you get, the more giddy they are. And it just keeps going until you break it off. And there's a very hard thing when you fall into that trap is to break it off. Okay. And that tends to go with psychic attacks as well, which would be they would trigger you psychically into an emotion or a problem. Let's say someone that a psychic vampire triggered you specifically or Mari and saying, hey, 
we're going to cause this to happen in your life. You're going to get angry so we can feed up. Well, that sounds familiar to me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so when you find a psychic vampire that is psychically attacking you, mm-hmm. they have gone above an emotional vampire because now they realize that they can do it psychically. They don't have to physically trigger you. And that's a That problem. is when it becomes a psychic attack. That's when it starts so, getting fun. <laughs> so, Mari, how would you specifically handle a psychic attack that is trying to feed off of you as well? Well, this is a common occurrence, especially when I go home. Mm-hmm. So, I usually fall for it first couple minutes and then I have to regain my composure the Mm -hmm. thing not to do is to feed it so that emotion that they're trying to trigger you with because it'll won't it won't it won't um, just be on like a psychic level it also be on an emotional and a mental level so at the same time as they're energetically sending you this you'll also be sending you that particular emotion to trigger you as well as you'll get mental images so you stay in that state of mind so it's a very complex thing. Okay. So basically, you feel this sense of despair and almost like a victimhood, I guess. Depending on what they're trying to get from you to feed off of. So mm-hmm. if they want you in an angry state, then they'll trigger things in you that will make you angry. Or if they want you in a depressed state, then they'll trigger those protect- particular kinds of things in you. Yes. Ah. So, my my daughter actually did that to me for months. It was attack after attack after attack. She called me names. She called me the B word and tell me that I was stupid all the time and trying to get me to feel depressed and upset because that was what made her feel better. My brother does that all the time. Yeah. And it usually it's puts really me in a bad mood too. That. Yes. So that's really interesting. I think so many people possibly can relate to that. Mm-hmm. So understanding what emotion you're feeling, then you have to realize, is this really mine or is someone tricking you into feeling this? Because if you look and you actually have no, you know, physical root to it, physical root mean being like, um, five minutes before, was I feeling like this? Is there some sort of memory triggered? And if you don't have a memory trigger, then most likely it is an implant. Okay. And I suppose it can also set people against each other too. Um, yeah. Like you know, even friends may be affected by such things. Yeah, imagine that, Gary. <laughs> Melody, <laughs> they can. Um, she's she's asking, uh, what if they can do all of it? And yes. Technically, yes, they they can do all of it. If they so choose, some people, some don't choose to do that because certain things feed them better than others. Um, when they become to the point where they are becoming a dangerous emotional and they have elemental as well as they can graze because they wouldn't be an emotional if they couldn't graze as well. Um... A lot of times those people that would do all of that would become a dominion, which is the fourth type of psychic vampire. Which we'll get into. Okay. Um, so far, grazers, technically grounding and um, making sure that you are self-care and not in a bad place. Grazers want to target you, and so therefore you don't really have to worry about them too much. Um, keep grounded if you feel like you're losing your energy or something sucking you. Grounding and cleansing are very good ways of keeping them at bay. Elementals, you're not going to be able to really worry or have to guard against them. Because of the fact that they are not feeding on human emotion and life force. When you come to an emotional vampire, you're going to have to not only know your emotional state, keep to, it's none of my business type of a deal. (laughs) Don't play into their baiting. Because that's where you're going to get in trouble is when they start baiting you and you take that bait. 
I imagine it's easier said than dumb phone. It oh, is. It's very easy, because if you have somebody in your face yelling at you, you're going to mm -hmm. get triggered. I don't know very many people that would be able to keep their calm through something that's escalating before your eyes, even yeah. though that is the best way to protect yourself. It is, but then you can be triggered by certain things, and then you feel like you need to defend yourself. Mm -hmm. Right. And then things go downhill pretty damn fast. Exactly. <laughs> that's exactly it. It's all about that spiral because you're your own worst enemy and that's what they're banking on. Exactly. And so mm -hmm. they're not going to target somebody that is not easily triggered because it's no, it's no fun for them to exhibit or exacerbate their <clears throat> own energy out. They don't want to lose their own energy causing this to happen so that they could feed because they are already low on energy at that mm -hmm. point. So oh. they're, they're not going to go after somebody that is grounded, that is shielded from them, that doesn't take bait very easily. And so a person that knows themselves and has confidence in themselves is not going to be an easy target for them. And so I suppose most, that also will be... If you are prone to being a victim, or you tend to go into bitterness or resentment, then you become an easy target, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So, let's take Mari for example, since we're going there. <laughs> <laughs> She's triggered by the fact that she wants to help her family. But her family triggers her by baiting her into telling her that she's not worthy. Or she hasn't done enough for them which causes Mari distress so that they're feeding off of her, of her mm -hmm. distress. And usually when I visit home, the first couple days I'm fine. But then after being home for a little while and after getting drained a little by little and my sleep schedule's all messed up, then I'm mm -hmm. pretty much done for till I go back home. So. Which, <laughs> which is why I suspect that you are their Renfield. Yes. I, you were probably right there, like the fourth one. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so what Mari's dealing with technically would be the fourth type, which is a Dominion. Yay! Um, because of the situation that you're in, that is mm -hmm. what's, what's saying, okay, this is what we're looking at. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually going to read this off because it's a lot. Uh, to, to consolidate. So I'm just going to read it because it's got all the information there, okay? Sounds so good. The fourth type is what we call the dominion. They dominate others and are often dictators that disguise themselves as angels, demons, gods, monsters, prophets, and harbingers of death. They literally suck out the life chi energy of others. They use the means of physical contact, psychic, astral contact, in their feeding. The Dominion often have a Ren field, often a BFF or a confidant or a daughter or son. <laughs> this Ren field is the backup of the Dominion when their energy is low and can't find a good source of food. How this happens is Dominion gains the trust of their Renfield, then drains him so much of energy, then they make a statement such as, I'm going to die or leap, which would make the Renfield's life seem pointless. So that in his anguish at being alone, abandoned and helpless, he would take the only action available to a depressive. The Dominion is literally driving the Renfield to the point of suicide, then either saves the Renfield in the nick of time or allow this to happen so that it can feed off the energy that is connected to the Renfield's depression. And then the cycle starts over again. Most fabricate a reason to fall into depression again and again so that the Renfield's affection and aid will continue to be with them. When a Renfield is lost, the Dominion often has a backup already in place in case of escape or death of their Renfield. The Dominion is not always emotionless to their prey. Some do tend to go through depression themselves when they lose a source. They are human after all. 
when you find a rent field or a dominion in their rent field, basically the dominion will be the center of attention. Everybody has to be around this dominion and giving them the affection. They are the center of everyone's world in essence. So when you have somebody that's the center of attention, everybody's doting on them and giving them energy and loving on them. And when they don't feel good, everybody's there. Now their rent field, they're the ones that give affection the most to the dominion. They support them in ways that nobody else does, but often they are ignored. They are not good enough. And when they have a problem, everybody attacks them or ignores them over Dominion's demands. So when the Renfield is depressed and having problems, the Renfield will cause a problem or make up a problem. So everybody is worrying about the Dominion over the Renfield. And that is part of the reason why I'm saying that I believe Mari is actually her family's Renfield. And due to this problem that she's always going through with her family. Yeah, um, that's pretty accurate. <clears throat> so, Mari has ex- experienced loss and frustration, depression. I've seen her get angry. All the while, the person that is her dominion has created situations that everybody comes and hovers around the dominion because the Dominion has a problem, even though poor Mari's over here in distress, but nobody wants to pay attention to Mari's depressive and state of mind because she's not the center of their universe. So it seems to me that that goes hand in hand with something like sociopaths and narcissists. Correct. I would say that sociopaths and narcissists would be similar to a Dominion, but the difference is most sociopaths and narcissists do not have a spirituality based understanding and for them to be a dominion they have to know that they are causing this to happen because they know that this makes them feel better that's quite a mind blowing concept that there are people out there who actually are doing this on a deliberate and conscious level because it really says a lot about the sort of person they Mm -hmm. are and most dominions actually derived from an emotional type psychic vampire because they have learned what type of emotion especially if they're targeting negative emotions and then when that's not good enough for them or they haven't have become more addicted to this energy then they become oh wiser and more calculated with what they're doing that's when it seriously becomes a problem and so they would do things like try and cut you off from the things that you like to do or your friends or people that are important to you yeah so when you have a friend that is seems to be in the center of attention all the time and you're constantly trying to get someone to actually pay attention to you because you need help and you're getting ignored that's when you're gonna you're gonna see those signs and say okay what am i dealing with and most renfields have no clue what they're dealing with because they they don't know anything about this stuff and And even if they do know what they're dealing with as it's family i guess they would feel very obliged so there's not a lot they can do to fix it right correct it's very difficult So when you have a Renfield in your family and a Dominion in your family where you are their Renfield, how are you going to step away from that situation? They're your family. They rely on you. Everybody is telling you you need to be there for that person because you are their rock. But in reality, you're their food. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's disturbing on so many levels. See, and then I wasn't always my mom, you know, the dominion around here. It was my dad. Uh-huh. So it was me and dad. So when dad left, now it's just me. Right, because you were the backup. Mm-hmm. So 
your dad was the one that was feeding until he got so sick that he could no longer provide that level of energy. Exactly. And so it was reverted to you because you're the only one left standing. Now, or less. how do you how do you protect yourself against this, though? That's what I'd like to know. Oh, it's so difficult. First of all, the hardest thing you'll ever do is disconnect. If you are a Renfield, the best thing that you can do for you is leave and don't look back. Mm -hmm. Break all ties with the person or the people that are surrounding the Dominion. Don't give it a second thought. Stay away. Because the you... less connected you are, the less likely they will be able to beat you in again. Well, the problem here is that the Dominion will ensure that things are set up so you feel obliged to stay. Correct. Like it might be financial, it might be guilt driven, mm -hmm. it could be a lot of different things. So how do you overcome something like that? That is, like I said, very difficult. You have to self care. You have to protect yourself. So if you cannot, absolutely cannot get out then you need to check your emotions. You need to know you the best. So self-care, you need to meditate, clean, and shield so that things the don't one, come at you. One thing I am sure of is that they will sabotage you so you are in those situations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so they're sabotaging you, but if you can see the sabotage happening, or if you can see the the situation for what it is, then you can take those steps so that it doesn't affect you like it did before. Knowing is half the battle, as they say. Yep. One thing I'm aware of, though, the, one of the ways they get to force you to comply is sleep deprivation. Mm -hmm. They keep you so exhausted and running around so much that you no longer have the energy to resist. Right. And so, if you feel like your life is pointless without your dominion, then the dominion's won. But if you have a life outside of your dominion, then you have that little bit of a leeway there. So, separation is key. If you can't completely get away, then separate yourself from each instance so if someone comes up and says I need this done and if you don't do it you're a worthless person so you tell yeah. them I am not worthless but you can do it yourself you're a big person put on your big girl oh, panties yeah. and do it yourself and when you start you fighting back then they will start getting angry and yep. frustrated with you okay and they will continue to push back at you but if you do not take a step back and you stand your ground, the next time they come at you, it'll be easier for you to stand your ground. And then the next time. And then you will no longer be worthy of their run field because you're standing your ground so you're not easy food. Makes a lot of sense. You know, I can see why this topic, there was so much resistance to actually us getting onto this topic today. Yes because it's pretty important. And when we're talking about these types, you know, I got a lot of hate and stuff when I first came out with this with my friend Serendipity, who helped write this and name each type and everything. And I got a lot of heat because the vampire community really didn't want this out. They fought against me tooth and toenail. They did not want me to do this. And I actually got death threats from some people wow. in the vampire community because they don't want people knowing this because if people knew this information, then they could protect themselves. Exactly, or at least be aware of what's mm -hmm. going on. That's, that's pretty big stuff, and I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people out there who would love to know or need to know this who I'm pretty sure forces will try and stop them from finding out. Yes, because... 
not only do these people exist on our plane because they have psychic gifts or these issues, they refuse to see the bigger picture, which means that they don't look at it as a problem that they have this chi leak and need to fix it themselves instead of draining other people. They see it and celebrate it as a great accomplishment, which is also a problem because if they really knew that their life force was leaking away, don't you think that they would actually want to fix the problem? They would, but of course if you try and explain it to someone, somebody would try and convince them, oh, that's just um, conspiracy or it doesn't exist or in your imagination. Right. And see, my daughter, I recognized her psychic vampire when she was three years old. We were sitting in church and this little old lady upset her. And she sat there and she stuck her finger out at this lady and was pointing at her. And you could just feel the anger coming off my daughter. And I like, no, you can't do that. And so she started draining me because I was upset that she was doing this and attacking this lady psychically to upset this lady. At three years old, she knew what she was doing. That is scary. So now That's she's cool 20. Scary. <laughs> she's 20 <laughs> years old now. And mm -hmm. throughout the years, we've had to sit her down and tell her, you can't do this. This is not right for you to impose your will on other people. It's not right for you to drain other people on purpose just to hurt them. And so she went from an emotional type, dominion type, at three years old, to now being a grazer. She only takes what she needs when she needs it, but she has learned to supplement herself with universal energy and the well of energy so that she doesn't have to go after people. Yes. Well, the thing here is that there aren't a lot of people like you about. That's In fact, true. you're probably the only person <laughs> I know who is like you. I mean, I'm sure there are others, but they're not thick on the ground, that's for sure. Which is, you know, a lot of people don't understand that these people do exist and they they don't know when they are a psychic vampire who else is there what are their options besides hurting people in a lot of ways because to them it's oh this makes me feel better and so it's like an addiction and it just gets worse and worse and worse whereas you have someone that recognizes the problem or you recognize it yourself and take the steps to heal yourself. Yeah. Wow. Melody's in the channel has asked a question. Mm -hmm. What would the Renfield do if the Dominion gets abusive or threatens the Renfield to keep them by force? That there is basically domestic violence and that is a lot of what the the dominion will do similar to a sociopath or a narcissist where it don't leave me but they're sorry or whatever but they want them to stay and so they will either keep them by force or guilt trip them into staying so, it's also difficult if you're under the age of, say, 18 or 16 and you don't have any other resources to go because you might be studying. Or, right. You know. And so a Renfield needs, when they're in a situation like that, they need to stay grounded and they need to avoid all conflict. And so if you're able to stay out until 9 or 10 o'clock at night, instead of coming home, do so. Because the less contact you have with the Dominion, the better off you're going to be. I'm not 
please do not run away. Please do not make yourself in trouble because of doing something to stay away from this thing. Because the more problems that you create in your life, especially if a dominion is a parent and you're a child or they are in charge of you, they could make your life even worse by you pushing back against them. But when you're pushing back against them, make sure that you're like, okay, I will do that. You're, you're told to do the dishes and they know you hate doing dishes. Go do the dishes. Without balking, yeah, wow. without having a problem, immediately <clears throat> stop what you're doing. Go do the dishes. If they tell you to, to clean your room, do it. Do not give them any excuse to cause you harm in any way. I know that's okay. rude to say, and I know that's hard to do, but you have to control you. And if you are not in control of you, then you are an easy target. That's a fact. And this is the thing, they will make it not only physically hard, but emotionally and mentally hard to get mm -hmm. away. Because they have a vested interest in keeping you in a very specific um, state of mind. Correct. So if it's a parent or a guardian or a husband, wife, they will create situations to make sure that you're stuck and so they will not give you money or they won't let you go out of the house or they will create a situation that you're stuck like make you think that you're not worthy to be able to experience life that you're not worth um, able to afford getting your own apartment away from them things like that whereas Yes. You are worthy. You can do things on your own. Millions of people do it every day. You have to make sure that you have a plan. Mm -hmm. So self-care is key. Yes. And I'm not talking totally. about self-care, grounding, meditating, those all you need to do. But have a plan in place. Get your budget. Do what you need to do so that you can stand on your own two feet away from your dominion. And that's the thing that they really don't want you to do. Exactly. That's for sure. So the minute you understand how to get on your feet, then you'll know what to do. Mm -hmm. So like when yeah. I was a teenager, you know, I made sure... Because I really didn't know, but on some level I did. So I joined a bunch of clubs. I was in the band. I stayed at the library till it closed almost mm -hmm. every day. So that's how I stayed out of the house. Wow. See, I was, just moved out when I was 15. <laughs> Damn. Why did I figure that? Mm -hmm. I was already graduated from high school. Damn and it. so I just moved out. And I went, I'm gone. See you later, you know. <laughs> Even though it didn't work out all that great for me to do that. <laughs> but it was, you know. It got me away but from the situation, situation. Even though Good I landed job, in a new situation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So, mm. I would suggest, you know, when you're dealing with psychic vampires, water shields. I know they're the most difficult shields to do. Water shields are the best against psychic vampirism and psychic attack. Because if they have nowhere to latch onto you, they can't feed on you. So do you want to just quickly explain what a water shield is again? Water shield is a shield of flowing energy. It looks like a waterfall. And so mm -hmm. your energy is constantly moving and shifting and flowing. So that there's nothing solid to grab a hold of. So think of them as leeches. And if you have a waterfall around you, the leech is not going to stick to it. And I know we discussed this before, but it's a very easy technique to forget. Mm -hmm. And we do have a podcast on different shields and techniques of how to do it. 
Um, I'll have to find that and link it. But we did do a podcast on all of that and the information is there and how to do all of that, how to actually create a shield and the different types that you will need to know throughout your life. And you'll find it on the YouTube channel too. We're coming to the end of this, so I want to touch bases on our fifth type of psychic vampire. And I know that I said there was okay. four types, but this fifth type technically is not a psychic vampire, but it is. Okay. <laughs> so, when you have the fifth type, they're called a protector. These protectors are indicative of what I call a mother's unconditional love. They protect others from all of these vampires that could cause problems. They take energy from other sources, but they give more than they take. So they not only suck in things like the other psychic vampires do, but they can actually give that energy to others because they do not have the chi leak like the other types do. So if you're always feeling exhausted, that could mean you do have a chi leak mm -hmm. and it's worth looking into if there are people around you who might be causing that. Correct. Mm -hmm. So when you have the protector, what they do is they recognize a problem. Let's say you're, you're sad. So they'll go over and give you a hug and suck up all that sad energy. But when they're done with that, they will give you joy and love back. And so you leave feeling more full and satisfied than before they came to you. Is that a good thing? It's a very good thing because these are giving you more than they take. And they're only taking what they deem you don't need. So if okay. you're anxious and you're having a problem, they will come in and calm your anxiety by giving you calm and love and compassion while pulling that anxiety out of you. Are those common? Because I don't know too many people who actually do they that. They are not very common. And if you have one in your life, you're very lucky. They're not going to tell you what they're doing, though. They do it because they, they do it out of love and compassion versus wanting recognition. And so 99.9% .9 of the time, you will never know that you have one in your life. That's really good to know. I really wish there were a lot more of those things around because... I get so many people coming to me with the Renfield domination mm -hmm. problem. Yes. When they do that, you have to assess, are they truly a Dominion Renfield, or are we dealing with a socio-narcissistic person and their captor? And yes. there's a fine line there, because they go hand in hand, really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we have to assess is this spiritual in nature or is this emotional which yes i know it's all emotion i understand that <laughs> <sighs> but Still. anything with spiritual nature beings understanding your own nature is very useful to your own growth so you have to be honest with yourself if you are doing this or not if you are a victim of it or not you have to have self-assessment all the time because technically in my assessment 90 percent of the population are a psychic vampire in one way or another it's an interesting statistic so you may be a vampire a psychic vampire yourself and not know it but knowing yourself and knowing what's going on with you helps mm -hmm. you understand and fix the issues before they get out of here. Anything that we need to wrap up before we end? Did I miss anything? <laughs> no, Good. guess any final thoughts, I guess. Be kind to yourself and others. Don't go around on a witch hunt for vampires because you're gonna be very sorely mistaken 
because you yourself might be a psychic vampire. Yeah, I suppose in the end it's a matter of it's not whether there are vampires around, it's more what can you do to not be affected by that. Correct. How about you, Mari? Did you learn something today? I did. It was very informative. <laughs> I learned new words. <laughs> Um, for me, it's all about intention. You know, just because something looks really nice doesn't necessarily mean it actually is exactly like that. Correct. Mm -hmm. Well, yes. thank you all for tuning in, and I hope you guys learned something today. Yes, thank you, everybody. We will have a podcast next week, which is on which subject, Jen? We are doing the subject haunting. And that is something which I'm sure a lot of people will be very interested in. Oh, yes. Yes. I know it. I love this subject, so. (laughs) You guys all have a wonderful rest of the day, and be safe this weekend. See you next time. Thanks, everybody. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, here are some others you might find interesting. If you have any thoughts, I'd love to hear about them. Leave a comment maybe even the like I rise like a phoenix